you know, for the, for the first time in a long time. And, and I'm absolutely, you know, I, I reached out and, and he actually answered, he actually answered the phone. It's like, Oh God, Nelson, Nelson's reaching out. What's going on here. And, and I go back to the blast of the past and I found, I found this promo and he's had, he's having his morning coffee. So he definitely needs that before he, he gets, listens to this. So here I found Jarrett. I found this promo. Hey, Glenn Davis here in Houston, Texas, a big fan of soccer down here. And remember soccer matters. Because it does, Glenn Davis. Good morning. All right. Good morning, John. Wow, I forgot I did that. That was pretty good. I probably didn't screw the one liner up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's great to have you here, my friend. You're you still got active stuff going on. Well done. Yeah, we're we're making things happen. We love the game just like you and Jared. And and, and you know, it's 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 a privilege to be able to be involved with something you like all the time. I always tell people, uh, you know, it beats working. Mm hmm. Uh, so we have, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this and blow out everybody's ears if I can find it. But uh, here we go. Best 11's out. And uh, some guy that, you know, Ache Ache is in on the midfield for the best 11. What kind of a year has it been for you to see uh, Hector Herrera go after it? Well, you know, the big question before the year, I think, was, you know, how engaged was he going to be? There was a lot of rumors in the offseason. He was not happy um, that there was a potential that he was pushing to leave after last season. But we all know he was preoccupied with the Mexican national team in the World Cup. Um, the roster has been changed over a lot more. So the first question answered was, was he engaged? Absolutely. Um, I don't think there's a player in this league that has affected an overall club culturally on and off the field as much as he has. It, it has been an absolute joy to watch him leading young players, helping to create a culture here. And let's not forget, I mean, he plays in all thirds of the field. So he may be back building the game up from you, picking the ball up off the goalkeeper. He may be back making a tackle in the box, uh, the middle of the field. He's working all that combination play. And then essentially he's a playmaker in the final third. So uh, what he's done on and off the field, um, I, I wish the city of Houston and maybe some of the other mainstream media could pick up on what a star he has been and what a season he's had. Jared, go for it. it uh, getting away from him for a moment because as as good as he has been this year, um, really, what's as people watch this coming up uh, this weekend with the Western Conference Final, who's a player who isn't as well known to a national audience that they need to keep an eye on going into this game, especially if they want to tell their friends that they knew so and so before it was cool. Yeah, there's some really, really good stories. I mean, that's, that's almost a hard one to answer because there's, there's some good ones. I mean, obviously, look, um, I don't know if the country has picked up on this. I think people have, but I, I don't know to what extent. But when Griffin Dorsey became the right back uh, and had opportunity in the Leagues Cup and then won the starting right back position, he added a huge element that was missing from this team, and that's width. Every, every good attack has to have width. We, we saw all the great combination play with Herrera, Carrasquilla, Artur, who's also been exceptional. We saw a lot of the short, tight, give and goes, the aesthetic value in, in, in a lot of that. But that needed width in order to bloom even more. And it got width with Dorsey, who, um, you know, all of a sudden was, was flying forward. He scored a goal uh, against Santos and won the starting right back position. Now, this... This growth in this man is 180 degrees. Now, a lot of that has to do with the culture with Herrera, more hardened pros, Fiachenko, Artur. I think that lifted some of the guys that were a part of these poor Dynamo teams, frankly, um, that did not have the level of quality, and I say this respectfully, that it should to compete in MLS. So he's, he's a great story, and I think the other one you have to really look at uh, – in combination with that is is your guy, Franco Escobar, who was brought to be the right back, now has to play left back, which is not an easy thing to do if you're predominantly right footed. And then the addition of Eric Sviachenko in the, um, the summer window, 
just a great reader of the game, composed, exceptional defender, a guy that played at Celtic. Okay, so since you mentioned since you mentioned Sviachenko, if I could get my upper plate to work, we'll put that discussion, we'll bookmark that, put it over here, because that's been a, a talking point all week long. You had 16 different goal scorers for Houston this season. I mean, I think that speaks to to what Benny Ball has been been able to do there. I looked at the number and I was like, wow, 16 different dudes. I think that says a lot to the the depth and the balance that you've been able to put out there as well. Well, I think so, and they've found ways to win, right? I, I, I mean. You know, we've called a lot of games where they've scored first and you're going, you know, you just got to you got to take that second goal and make it a little more comfortable and not be under duress and pressure. But they have just found ways to win. I, I always go back to the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup final against Inter Miami. Absolutely blow blow Inter Miami off the field the first 45 minutes. But should have put that game away and it should have been an easy night. And sometimes, you know, you get a second or third goal, people stop running. It's an easy night for you or an easier night, let's just say. And of course, Messi didn't play, but that's been the scenario a lot this year. You know, Dynamo couldn't get a second against Sporting, left them open for the potential of a controversial call, which could easily have gone the other way. So, you know, I, I, I think, the one worry going into these games if you don't get the first goal is there's not a lot of natural goal scores. But, you know, at this point, I should just be quiet because they just seem to be defying the odds every game, and they're only two games away from it. And we have seen grind them out teams win MLS. So I think my, my next question for you is, is there a specific place that I need to send my complaint to Ben Olsen not being in the top three for manager of the year? Whoever votes on it, I mean, um, I, <laughs> I think I, that's what we always have to go with. You know, it's you know, people start getting mad at the guy who wins it. It's like, say he he didn't vote. He, he, uh, no, he just put I together know. a great season with Cincinnati. I, I, there's a lot going on down here, and and Ben is very quick to compliment his staff. Um, listen, you have 17 different players. Okay, you have got hardened pros on the team now. That's the moral of the the story. He has. He has players to work with now. You can't really say that's occurred here in the past because it was a little bit of a smoke and mirrors in the past. I mean, he's got players now to work with. He's done a fantastic job. I, I think you point right to his relationship with Hector Herrera that we see from afar. Everybody knows that a manager has to get a superstar on the same page with him, and, and that looks like a tremendous relationship. I know that uh, you know we. You mentioned playoff Franco, and to be able to to go from one end to the other and then try to kind of do things counter to your brain, I, I know it's uh, a little difficult sometimes. But what has it been like for you to see someone take this role like Franco Escobar has, go from one side to the other, and he just seems to. There's nothing wrong. Everything's. You just pick up your lunch pail and you go to work. What's it been like seeing playoff Franco go to work? Yeah, as a former center back who got stuck out wide once, I never want to go through that experience again. <laughs> I think that was worse than my divorce, honestly. Um, that, that that was that's you know. Look, this guy's a hardened pro, and he is a wing back, so he he can play wing back. But he he's you know he's got the Argentine grit. Uh, He's intelligent. He helps you control the side of the field. He's got a young guy in front of him who's benefiting from him and Nelson Quinones. Um, so I, I think to your point, I think what you're bringing out really is, wow, you know, what a performance he's put in for the Dynamo, uh, being able to adjust like that. Not everybody can do that. And that, that's not an easy thing to do. Um, I mean, I, I just thought it was very fitting that he scored the goal. Uh, got a great run at the delivery from Herrera and pounded in the header. But, uh, you know, if, if a ball comes across to you and you're not competent with your left foot as a predominantly right-footed guy, a lot of times your first touch goes back towards pressure. So it's, it's, it's kind of a simple theory, but it's not an easy thing to do. He, he's been incredible. He really, he, he really has been good. Derek, go for it. Houston's been a market that has always felt like a sleeping giant. Uh, oh, don't market. say that, Jared. Please don't say that. <laughs> this is not a sleeping giant. It may be a sleeping giant in MLS. It is not a sleeping giant as a soccer market. Okay. Oh, Everybody know. says that. It's incredible how this moniker gets picked up. I know. I'm talking about it from the MLS perspective. I know you. I know you are. I'm just giving. I'm just giving you a hard time. He's at. He's at his cup of coffee. It's kicked in. 
I'm um, ready. Let's go. Um, no, yeah. It's but but from the from the MLS side and how has and, and I know as an overall soccer soccer market, we know what it is. But how has the the response and the growth been this season through the entire process in terms of just the fan base, people showing up, you know, flags, stickers, shirts popping up around town. How has the buy-in been from the fan base with it? From start to finish or currently? Uh, I, I guess from start to finish, just because yeah, the whole season feels unless like you, it's Unless really you short. talk about it in the context of start to finish, yeah. you're not yeah. going to get the – if you go to the stadium now, it's packed, there's energy, there's excitement, there's new media jumping on board. The question is, will they be there next July when it's 95 degrees? That's a question mark. If you look at the attendance in the league, the Dynamo were 29 out of 29. Mm. Okay, dead last. Now, I don't want to be a buzzkill here, but you also have to think about reality and what this moment can do if capitalized on by, by the franchise. I was, uh, we down here saw a week where Guatemala sold the stadium out. The entire place was blue. Um, then El Salvador sold the stadium out. It was entirely blue. And then two top teams from Mexico came in and sold it out. And in between that, there was a Dynamo game that filled about 30% of the stadium. So <clears throat> to keep it simple, to me, there is this giant, it's like an iCloud, of authentic soccer fans in Houston that have not been tapped into. Um, you have a product now that fits perfectly for a market that's full of Central Americans, South Americans, Mexicans, Europeans that love soccer and love quality soccer. There never has been a Dynamo team that on the ball is this competent when it comes to, you know, the way it plays the game aesthetically. And, and, and I'm not dissing on six and seven teams because that was a completely different team built in a different way to play in a small field at Robertson Stadium. But this, this is an incredibly marketable product, great leaders, great personalities, some really funny guys as well. And, the, and they all play for each other. So, um, that still is a question mark, but we're in the midst of, uh, you know, the ride and everybody's jumping on the train. now. So then how do you turn that question mark into an exclamation point? You have to go out to the authentic soccer community, in, in my mind, to go back to simply what I said without getting too deep and detailed into it. That's out there for you. That's out. There's a lot of things that that need to be done when it comes to the understanding of Houston as a market the understanding of Houston as a soccer market. And uh, I'm, you know, that's why I wanted to make you like guru of everything to sit there. And it's like, okay, how do we fix this and, and turn this around? Because you, you have been for the longest time, you've been the Pied Piper of, Hey, we really can have something special here in a market with a club and an experience. And that's why, you know, you see something like what Houston is doing with the run that they're on and you want to try to capitalize on something like this with a new owner, a couple of years removed, new investment, those kinds of things. And that's why I wanted to ask this. I don't want the margins to be slim and it has to be the playoffs when there's a buzz about soccer down here. Yeah. I mean, why can't it be like Atlanta where there's a buzz every single game? Um, you know, and I think authentic soccer fans are the ones that will sit in the heat and drink beer. Uh, you know, in the heat of July and August. And, and I, I just, I, I feel like we're bypassing them a little bit down here. Um, but there's raw material here now. There's, there's a quality team. There's personalities. There's a coach with a personality. Uh, there's no excuses for this team not to be fully ingrained in Houston. But, you know, I, this city's given me everything. So it's, it's why I'm passionate about it, the soccer community. And I just... Um, I just feel very strongly that this this shouldn't be something that, you know, we only get excited about when we make the playoffs, right? Um, so I, I, I want the long-term comprehensive game in and game out going to that stadium and feeling a buzz. Jared, go for it. Yeah, and I actually want to ask about the last game because you, you mentioned taking down Sporting Kansas City. And it's such a weird game just because it felt like – Houston just kind of floated on the outside of a lot of people in the national media for worse, not even for better this year. Um, and then everyone wrote off uh, SKC and it kind of felt like, every, it kind of felt like this whole thing where it didn't get nearly as much press as it should have that game. 
for being as fun as it was, is that something that this team can kind of internalize the idea of, Hey, they, they're, they don't want to give us all the attention. We'll go snatch. We'll go give them an excuse to pay attention. Yeah. I, I don't know. Sometimes that's made up to the press, but I, I, I guess I think it's fair to say that, yeah, you think you're bypassed, but look, if you've had eight years of futility outside of 2017, why do you deserve a, you know, you got to go earn it. I mean, that's, that's the way I look. I mean, I heard Michigan the other day, like they won against, and they're like, it's us against the world. I'm like, you know, <laughs> right. I, you know I'm tired of the, uh, it's us against the world, right? If you're a professional, you want to win a championship. And that's what these guys are. Uh, I don't think they're going out on the field. We're going to prove to America we're the best. No, I, I mean, look, the people that make predictions at the beginning of the year, do they really have time to do a lot of homework? They're looking at last season's results and they're going, oh, the Dynamo were 13th out of 14. Well, I guess I better put them somewhere around, uh, you know, 12 to 14, right? But for me, it was a playoff team from the start simply because of Herrera, because of the acquisition of Artur, and then the act, and then Coco Kerski. I'm like, now, okay, you finally have a midfield after all these years that can protect the back four, that can keep the ball. That in itself has to get you in the playoffs in an 18, you know, when 18 out of 29 teams make it. So that was my theory. I figured five to, to eight, somewhere in there. I never thought they would be four and get home field advantage. But I think, look, you utilize anything you can for motivation. Um, you know, I heard a lot of people, oh, it's the rivalry with sporting. And I'm looking at the roster going, none of these guys have ever played in that game, really. So <laughs> I don't think that's like the priority. That's a great thing for the fans. It's awesome. Um, but, you know, I, I guess maybe middle America sometimes, uh, you know, the third coast down here in Kansas City, who's had outstanding success for so many years and sells out all the time. I think they get bypassed. Uh, another couple of minutes here with Glenn Davis. Uh, it's great to always have Glenn on because we all know that soccer matters. Um, since you mentioned Sviachenko at the beginning of the segment, we'll go ahead and get into that. Uh, it, a lot of folks are sitting there saying handball, no handball. It's been the great discussion or one of the great discussions for the first couple of days this week. As you watched it unfold and then got the benefit of replay and stuff, what was your vision about what happened there with the the, the no call at the near post with Sviachenko. Yeah, it was pretty crazy because the Dynamo had just scored, right? And as we often, you guys know this, you know, all of a sudden there's a, a really good chance. And it was kind of a chaotic sequence with Polito being saved by Clark. And then he's on the line, his hands are by his side. It happened so fast initially. I didn't know it hit his hands. I thought it might have hit his chest. Then on the replay, it clearly hits his hand. And look, we can all have our opinion, penalty or no penalty. It only matters what one man thinks and, and VAR, right? Mm -hmm. It's totally subjective. It's never going to be a rule that's clear. But we all know that penalty has been given by many, many people, okay? So it's a controversial moment. Even Ben Olsen admitted he thought it was a penalty. So, I mean, the Dynamo got the benefit of, a doubt, uh, of the doubt, but... Anybody who wins an MLS Cup is, you know, you can go back and say at some point they got a break here or there. So maybe that's a good, good sign for the Houston Dynamo uh, looking out. Jarrett, go for it. Goal scored off that set piece going up against a team in L.A. that also likes their fair amount of set pieces. And you speaking as a defender, I mean, how how much fun is that to have those moments knowing you have somebody who can deliver a dead ball like that? that makes any set piece a kind of, uh, you know, edge of your seat kind of moment where, you know, we can, we can, we can score, we can turn the narrative of this game and we can turn basically the entire focus of this game with somebody who can put a, put a ball on a dime like that, uh, even against the run of play. Yeah. I, and I think it's, it's, it's an area where the dynamo really haven't capitalized on, you know, Jarrett and John, the, the, the delivery that Herrera gives you. And I mean, there's movement in his delivery. I mean, this one he puts right on the edge of the six with the zonal defense, right? And you'll see Rosero trying to get out there and stick his head on it. But Franco Escobar gets a great four-yard run, five-yard run at it, which to me is has always been the key to heading. And it's so hard 
to get a run at a lot of these set pieces nowadays because of the clutching and the grabbing. But I, you see on the video, Rosero's trying to get out there, and it's all of a sudden like a flash. Franco gets in there and sticks his head on it, and it ends up being the game winner. But I, I think in the future, the Dynamo are going to want to utilize um, <clears throat> Hector Herrera's delivery more to their advantage. He tries to pick out Sviachenko a lot, and they just haven't produced a goal yet. They've come close, and I just – every game I'm like, okay, maybe it's today. But, um, yeah, his delivery is, is wicked. And I, there's another pretty simple thing, too, that – the Dynamo get the ball off their feet so much quicker, right? And I and I think a lot of that is the influence of Herrera saying, hey, get the ball to people's feet quicker so they have a, a, another second or two before they're put under pressure in the modern game. And, and, and I see that in warm-up. I mean, he's slamming balls at people, right? And they're having to control it. And you're either, you're either rising with the tide or, you know, you're going to be anchored to the bottom somewhere. All right, so uh, wrapping up with you, we were talking about the uh, the juice boxes heading into this match, and the juice boxes actually increased in hour number one. Houston is a plus 403 on the board heading to Los Angeles. Would you take that plus 403 if you were a neutral? Okay, explain that to me because I'm not a betting guy. Okay, so basically if you put in uh, 100 bucks. Yeah. Then you got you got it at plus four oh three. Basically you'd be getting four times your investment back. Where can I place that bet? Because I will place that bet. There you go. That's oh, I think the Dynamo are gonna win in Los Angeles. I, I don't think they're overawed by them. I think a lot of it'll have mm-hmm. to do with individual moments with the two skilled players and and, and uh Bowanga and obviously Vela. But I think the Dynamo midfield matches up beautifully with them. They don't concede a lot of goals. They've gone there and won before. Not that that means anything at this point, because that was a lot earlier in the season. But I, I think it's a good bet. We, you, off air, you have to tell me where I can place that. Well, I mean, any any uh, any juice box purveyor, I think that you can uh, see that. Uh, all of the the ones that you see on so the. It was four to one on a hundred bucks. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm Thanks. in. Yeah, uh, so so are we actually. This would be my first MLS bet. Am I allowed to do that as a guy who calls the game? I uh, might get might get you in trouble there, sir. Yeah, maybe I better not be saying this publicly. Uh, I am not going to bet. May, but but you know, I know a guy. When you, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I, you sit there and it's like you open up your wallet or the 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 bell jar in the kitchen. You sit there, and go, okay, look, I need you to do something for me. So, so then, some guy in a trench coat is going to come yeah. knock on my door. That's how I do the bet. Okay. Exactly. That's yeah. how. Uh, I'm going to say the Dynamo win, uh, but I'm not going to place a bet. There you go. Excellent. Uh, All right, so hit the promo for me. How can folks keep an eye and keep an ear on everything that you're doing there in Houston? Yeah, uh, tonight, you know, every Tuesday night, I have a radio show, Soccer Matters, as you mentioned. It's on ESPN 97.5, Twitter, Instagram, at Glenn Davis Sock, and then uh, on uh, YouTube, a lot of interviews. You know, like I did a really interesting one with Hector Herrera recently. Uh, my friend Jordi Sunier in Barcelona comes on a lot. So it, it's a lot of fun on YouTube. It's um, the channel is uh, it's uh, YouTube soccer matters. There you go. Uh, so uh, can I talk to your producer about getting uh, uh, at Glenn Davis sock on the show again, same time next week to discuss what happened? You are, you, you can a hundred percent do that. Let me run that by my people, John. Uh, there, there's a heavy web of people I got to go through, but uh, my my gut is I think it can happen. Excellent. So next Tuesday, win or lose, we will have the return of Glenn Davis. Uh, golden ticket holder, golden ticket status means that you can crash anytime, my friend, but we're looking forward to it. Thanks for coming back on. It's been entirely too long. Good luck this weekend, and we'll be keeping an eye on you, and we'll, and we'll be looking forward to catching up with you again next week. John Gerardo is really fun. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. All right. He's going to enjoy his coffee and do his thing. And uh, so it's a, a busy day for Glenn Davis. He gets to hang out with us. and We get to talk the, the benefits of everything going on with Houston soccer. That was fun. It's always fun to have Glenn on the show.